Isma. Well, this expression cannot just be defined in one word because uh, it represents a lot of things. It represents, for example, our belief that in Africa, the kind of economic, social and political institutions that make sense must find their meaning in the African setup. Uh, that any new organization which we bring up must be based on some traditional concept to life. Uh, it must not just be imported from outside. For example, we are uh, uh, clan-minded, we are tribal-minded in that we are communal in our concept of life. Now, it is necessary that our new institutions are based on this approach, what we have called in our definition of African socialism, mutual social responsibility. That is, that a person is not just an individual, he's part of a system, he's part of a community. He has responsibilities within that community. He has duties to perform in that community. But in turn, the community has also got responsibility to him. They have duties towards him and his children. Um, this is a very important concept. The other concept is that every person has got equal value and, and worth. Although some of our people in tradition, traditional life, had a lot of wealth, but their wealth was not really belonging to them as individuals. They held it almost in trust for the rest of the community. And when any of the members of the community got into trouble, or when he wanted um, uh, cows to pay dowry, he always looked to this as a position which he could also have access to. So that um, there is this element of acknowledging individuals as equal humans in the community. The third one is that every decision was made through consultation and discussion and by a consensus. There was no question of one person deciding for the rest or um, of a minority deciding for the rest. The, there was also a proper procedure which laid down how every decision must be taken and at what level different decisions must be taken. There was a procedure by which certain members of the community attained seniority and by that seniority they were in a position to take certain decisions on behalf of the community. This is the democratic nature of our society. And lastly, there was the element that there was belief in a supreme, human, a supreme being that is, we paid homage to God or gods. We acknowledged there existed a God. We had certain religious functions, not denominational, but born in our tradition. Before we harvest, we have to do certain things to pay homage to God. Before we go to um, break the ground for cultivation, we pay homage to God so that there is a distinction, for example, between what we believe in as socialists and what the communists believe in. There is a basic distinction. Um, and uh, the other distinction with other socialists, uh, say the democratic socialists, the Christian socialists of Europe uh, and the Labour Party in Britain, is that we believe that our socialism must be founded from certain African traditions. Now, into this Kenya, uh, countries from around the world uh, want to uh, help to come with their aid. And I understand that you are interested in assistance from abroad. Is that right? This is true, yes. Now, what kind of aid would you be mostly interested in, Mr. Mboya? Well, there are two uh, major problems in a developing country like ours. One is the shortage of manpower. And the second is the shortage of capital, capital both for government uh, activities and also for investment in the private sector. So we are interested in aid, in uh, bringing into the country enough capital to facilitate our development. We are also interested in aid in terms of investments, those in, who wish to invest in the private sector. But you see, if you have capital alone and you don't have the required manpower, you cannot use the capital. And so we are always also interested that where we get capital, we should also get some technical assistance 
people who can help us to carry out our projects. Um, but our uh, long-term objective is to move away from aid so that we can concentrate on trade. Our policy is to um, minimize aid and expand trade as the years go by. And we are very anxious to develop trade relations with outside countries. I think mostly we want to develop trade relations with our neighboring countries within Africa because uh, in the final analysis, intra-African trade is more important to us than trade with foreign countries who have a very highly sophisticated economic uh, setup. Uh, how is uh, your thinking uh, when you think of the slogan Africa for Africans? What role will the Europeans and the Indians play in the future Kenya? Well, um, I think one thing is to distinguish between what this means in terms of government uh, what it means in terms of government is that the governments of Africa must be African governments. This is really what it means. Uh, beyond that, we concede, like every other part of the world, that uh, you will have foreigners uh, living amidst our people, and uh, they will be governed by the laws of the land. Also, we have in our constitution provision for other people to become citizens, and there are number of uh, Asians and Europeans who have become Kenya citizens since independence and they will enjoy the same rights as myself or any other African. So to that extent they are Africans um, and uh, they should just like myself say Africa is for the Africans. What we're really saying is to exclude foreign powers from interfering in our own uh, local affairs and also to um, eliminate uh, colonialism and uh, minority rule from Africa. So if I came here and settled and behaved well and applied for citizenship and acquired citizenship, could I also be a member of your parliament and also be a minister? Yes, in fact we have a, uh, uh, a white man who is a minister in the Kenya government. We have another one who is a minister in the Tanzania government. There's another one who is a minister in Zambia. So there are many of white people who are already uh, members of parliament and even members of the cabinet. In the case of the Kenya minister, Mr. Mackenzie, he's not only a white man, he is a former South African, but he's become a Kenya citizen and he is accepted by the Kenya people. He is a member of our party and uh, as a result, he has become a minister since independence. Now, the East African cooperation between Tanzania, Uganda, and Kenya has been very close, but now Tanzania has broken out more or less and made a strong socialist uh, goal. Uh, does that affect the cooperation in any way, do you feel? Well, it, it, it does depend on how this is done. So long as there is harmony between our policies, we can continue in a cooperation uh, although our different countries may take different paths towards socialism. I don't believe that Tanzania is any more socialist than Kenya. It is just that their approach is slightly different from ours. Um, I think that eventually um, it, it will be possible to harmonize uh, some of these uh, approaches within uh, the context of East African cooperation. Are you thinking of nationalizing the banks and uh, these other companies which uh, Tanzania now do? No, we don't uh, think of doing the same things as Tanzania. Our policy on nationalization has been very well defined in our government paper on socialism. We will only nationalize where it becomes absolutely necessary to do so and where it is um, because there is no other means of securing the right responses to the economic needs of the country. But we do not nationalize indiscriminately, nor do we believe in it dogmatically. It has been said uh, by people who know quite well the problems of the world that the, the underdeveloped countries become poorer and poorer, and the rich countries become richer and richer, that the, the distance is growing larger and getting smaller. Uh, is that uh, true to any extent and how should we overcome this problem, do you think? This is very true and I have defined it very, very comprehensively in my speech at Lagos 
which I have since published, um, showing how difficult these terms of aid, terms of loan, and so on have been getting, and also the terms of trade between the developed and developing countries, and also showing how these per capita incomes in the developed countries have been going up, whereas those in the developing countries have re been remaining stagnant or even uh, reducing. So there is a definite problem, and it's a problem which must be solved. This is why I propose that there's a need for a specific Africa development strategy, and that strategy is one intended to put Africa's development on an emergency basis and not just on a casual basis as it is today. It is one which will require that the developing countries make special contribution towards an African development uh, uh, fund. It is one which will require that African states themselves contribute towards a general uh, African uh, development program, uh, which requires cooperation between them. This is um, something I could speak on for a long time but which I have defined in a comprehensive document now published as a Kenya government document under the title a strategy for um, uh, a, develop a development strategy for Africa which uh, you might find to be very interesting reading. In that uh, connection I would like to ask you how do you look upon the, the development now towards a more uh, common European market? Is that a threat, a, a further threat to the relation between the richer nations and the poorer nations? No, I don't think so. I think it is a logical development in Europe. I don't think there is very much of an alternative for Europe but to do this, especially with the end of colonial empires, uh, Europe has to reorganize herself. Does this uh, affect uh, Africa in any way? It does, because it means that Africa also must reorganize herself to meet the new European structure and also that we, also, uh, the European uh, concept of the common community must, uh, uh, be, must bear in mind that there are other parts of the world and not just Europe, and that Europe owes those parts of the world some cooperation.